Welcome to today's Tech Solutions session, creating personalized virtual hiring experiences with conversational AI. It is my pleasure to turn it over to our session presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Nace. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. This is David Stiefel with Paradox. Appreciate the opportunity to be in front of you um, today. So as explained, this is our topic for the session, um, just by way of brief introduction. So I am part of our enterprise sales organization here at Paradox. I've been in the recruiting tech space for quite some time, about 20, 21 years now. I've been across the ATS side of the space. So I've been with Taleo uh, for about nine years, and I've actually spent quite a significant amount of time at NACE conferences. And I spent a large part of my career, about six years um, with Yellow, who I know is a big part of the NACE organization as well. And we're really excited to introduce you to kind of a new way, a new layer of technology to help create different experiences for candidates, uh, for recruiters, for your organization. So our flagship product at Paradox is Olivia who you see on the screen here, you're gonna get some great insight into um, her today. Um, imagine a world, and, and we always like to think of Olivia in the realm of, imagine if you had an assistant who could scale your team and help to get work done, what would you have this individual do? So imagine if, I don't know, if part of your process at certain points throughout the academic year, it's really important to get updated transcripts from students. And instead of having to keep track of who's done that task and go out to those who have not yet completed it, imagine if you had someone like Olivia on your team who's automatically doing those types of tasks and outreach on behalf of your company. Um, imagine with an influx of interest from students, especially in the economy, that we're in, if you had the intelligence to know which students to speak with, let Olivia do kind of all the top of the funnel work and spend your time, spend your day talking to qualified students from specific schools. Um, what if you could give more of a modern experience uh, via chat to your students as they're engaging with you both virtually and physically as you attend school? So these are some of the concepts that we're gonna cover today as we go through Olivia and introduce you to her. So let me first position assistive intelligence. It is really everywhere. I don't need to waste your time explaining that. We see great companies like Amazon leveraging it in an Alexa device, Google with a Nest thermostat. Um, I wanna pick on the automobile for a second. Um, when it comes to how Elon Musk really revolutionized the industry. So certainly Henry Ford will always get credit for inventing the, the car, um, the first vehicle, but we saw someone like Elon, Elon Musk come in and really revolutionize the industry um, and take a, a product, if you will, that we were so accustomed to behaving and operating in specific ways for the decades that it's been around, all of a sudden, we were given new experiences with this vehicle. I don't own a Tesla. I will probably never own one. I've been in them. And it's just such a different experience in terms of interacting with the vehicle, communicating with the vehicle, having it drive itself. Um, and that's really how I wanted to position Paradox with respect to this presentation. So there are some great companies, some great vendors out there that have really helped to um, define and invent the campus recruiting space from a software perspective. What we've done is we've come in with technology that we've been building and, um, and enhancing over the past four years and apply it to different industries, to different verticals, to different types of recruiting, whether that be, you know, with some of our largest clients, you'll see some names in a moment, like in the fast food space with McDonald's, um, in consumer packaging, you'll see some of our clients as we move forward here and certainly in college recruiting and and especially in the in the current environment you know we see so many companies of course of course pivoting to a virtual um, 
environment for their internships or um, not running their internships this year. So I wanna take a brief moment and introduce you to Olivia across different capacities and how she behaves and how she operates at her core, which is really important for you to understand as we go through some of the specific components of Olivia with respect to campus recruiting, virtual events. So I wanna take a moment here and just go to some of our clients' websites to show you some of, of these experience. So this is one of the, the fun parts of the presentation. We'll have a couple interactive portions as we go through our next 30 minutes here. So here you can see I'm on one of our clients' websites and I can start communicating with Olivia. Um, a couple of things, notice if I say hola, she will immediately pivot and start speaking Spanish to me. Um, I can even ask her to speak Swahili if I wanted to. <clears throat> so she has great capabilities around communicating with candidates, not just in English, but in other language. Um, as I am on Procter & Gamble's page, you can see they've chosen to keep the Olivia picture, the Olivia name, and not changed her persona at all. As I go to their largest competitor, one of our, our great clients here, you can see they've chosen to give her a different personality, a different persona. This is gonna be really important as we start to go down into some of the, the different experiences around events. We see a lot of our clients branding her um, for students, especially with respect to the school, their mascot, and some of the things happening on campus there. But I can start to ask her things like, uh, what products do you sell? I can say things like, I am, um, what's the status of my application? So what's really important to note here with respect to our company is uh, we do not replace existing technology today. What you'll notice is we're just putting a, a layer over it um, and giving different experiences. If I go to another one of our clients here, I can actually talk to Jamie in this case and say things like, Hey, Jamie, I'm looking for information on internships. And Jamie is processing that question. And now she's actually going to speak back to me and navigate me to the right place on the website highly rated to find information and about internships. So that's just a quick peek into Olivia. I think it's really important um, for folks to understand how she operates, how she communicates. And you'll see a lot of those principles that I just uh, positioned to you as we go into events here. So what we're gonna do now is look at a couple of different um, areas where Olivia can also communicate outside of just the career page. So texting, I don't think I need to tell anyone on the phone how um, how powerful texting is in the student recruiting world, um, leveraging the computer in everyone's pocket to engage with students. So we're gonna go through and show you how individuals can get registered for events here on, uh, on a web page through chat. I just wanna show you some of the, the other avenues that are very popular with students. So this is text, of course. We have great capabilities to supply short codes or long codes, develops custom keywords for each individual school in each individual student population you're connecting with. And all I did here was text a keyword to a phone number. I'm greeted by my virtual assistant here. She's trying to match me to jobs. She's asking me some pre-screening questions, asking for a resume, upload a video. You'll see some of this live in action in a moment. And then ultimately, because I pass specific pre-screening hurdles or met minimum requirements, I'm being offered the opportunity to schedule myself for a virtual session, a virtual event right here, right on text. And I really want you guys to notice that we're not sharing any links. We're not asking anyone to download apps. We're not presenting web forms in front of candidates. We are simply having a natural conversation and that's a really important point. Olivia will always communicate in a very natural chat-like environment. 
So we are obviously living in a new reality. We're all learning every single day how we need to pivot our operations um, as some of these life events are thrown at us. So we're gonna, I'm gonna focus on a few areas here. Um, the first one related to communication, what we're, we're labeling as communication in crisis. To show you some of examples of what our clients have, be, have been doing since early March, when the world shut down, and we're starting to see our clients who have very large internship programs using Olivia in different ways. Now, of course, internship programs have just recently begun, so we have not yet documented all of those stories from our clients. They are trickling in as our account teams interact with them. They are trickling in as we go to their websites and see different ways they are using Olivia to support their operations. Um, but these are some really big examples and I'm gonna give some, some examples with respect to how they relate to campus and how we see our clients using Olivia in different ways. Um, so what we're looking at here is how one of our clients had to shift their operations. So in certain areas of their business, existing employees were essentially not needed anymore and they had other parts of their business where employees were needed. So at scale, Olivia was deployed over text, over email, to connect with existing employees where they had the potential to be furloughed, but also the potential to leverage them in other parts of the business. So we're just looking at a chat conversation on the right here. But what's really important is how this is being used by our clients and their students and their internships. Um, so a couple of examples that I've, I've captured from our account team here. Um, one of them is as internships are beginning and different projects are coming up, they're trying to communicate those opportunities to participate in projects with students. Obviously being in a virtual world and not being physical, it's a little more challenging. So we see them deploying Olivia to go out to ask students what they're interested in in participating um, maybe looking for specific skills or teams or projects, classes that they've taken and trying to match them to other projects. Essentially, think of this as a, a chat-like uh, survey environment, if you will. And then based on those conversations with the students, Olivia is pivoting what she is offering up and how she is routing them uh, through a process, connecting them to other members of the organization, other teams, getting them lined up um, to projects. So that's a really big area where we've seen um, Olivia being used. Another example I'll give, and I probably should have started with this one, is as companies started to announce that they were still um, going to keep their internships active, but certainly needed it to be virtual, they didn't make the assumption that everyone would be interested in doing that. So we saw Olivia going out to, you know, large clients with three, four, 800 interns, really just querying them to see if they are interested. Um, yes or, you know, giving information. These are our plans. This is what we're thinking. Are you interested in still participating? And then based on those responses, taking them down um, a conversational path to supply more information, collect more information from the candidate. And I'll give some other examples here in a moment. That's one great example of Olivia being used through this early part of the COVID epidemic. Um, here's another example from one of our clients. You can see the name on the screen here, McDonald's. What was happening is Olivia was gathering information, um, letting candidates know that their interviewing has changed. They're taking proactive steps to reduce the spread of the virus. If you have questions, this is what you can do. And just continuing down the, the path of the story with respect to interns that were gonna stay on board and participate and go through the program, for those that answered yes, there's a lot of new information that our clients had to give to students in preparation for this new environment. Um, similar to what we see McDonald's doing here, just um, in a different type of recruiting realm. So for instance, um, now that you're gonna be at home, you're gonna need 
um, these materials. Um, you're, you know, we want to mail you a shirt. We're not going to be able to hand it to you. What size do you want? Um, so lots of different information that, be, that can be collected throughout the process and interaction uh, with candidates. Another great example, you guys, um, you saw a component of this earlier when I was asking questions on some of our client sites. This is an example where we can have those types of uh, Q&A pages, if you will, be internal facing only. Great example from one of our clients, CVS here, where as some of their stores went offline, started to come back online, um, most of them never closed, but employees had lots of different questions. Um, they, they were fearful of potentially coming back. You see some examples on the screen here of some of the questions like, I need masks and gloves, what do I do? My child's school is closed, what do I do now? I think I might have coronavirus. So they were getting bombarded internally um, across their HR help desk with questions from employees on what do I do? And this is a way to alleviate a lot of the administrative work coming in and the, the, the need for a person to repetitively take on that work and answer those questions as they come in. And as you can imagine, when there's an influx of questions, people are waiting for answers and most individuals, especially students these days want instant engagement, um, instant access to information. And this is a really great way to do that. So there, um, you have lots of students, they have lots of questions as things are changing. And for instance, they might have questions like, I need to order supplies. I don't have access to my Zoom account. Um, and we can really leverage this type of technology using Olivia as an assistant to answer those questions at great scale. Now, this can be used throughout the semester, throughout the year. Um, can it, and you'll see some examples of this when I go into a live environment in a moment. Uh, prior to an event, even allowing students to answer questions before they register uh, for the event with you. So really a great way to give a different experience and to give access to information um, immediately. And for those of you with a large presence on social media, and I know most of you do, we can also have Olivia live and breathe on places like Facebook. So you saw web examples, you saw me show my phone uh, with texting. And here's a great example of one of our clients with a Facebook page and as I come to their page here, you can see I'm even greeted by Olivia trying to give good service, answer questions, potentially match them to internships, notify them of upcoming events that are that the team is planning, help get them registered for those events. It's a really kind of great layer of uh, communication and experience um, that's quite different than, than, than something students typically see from employers, but something that they are very used to in their everyday life as they interact with, you know, different technology on their phone or different technology that they're using in the classroom. And then finally, on the topic of communication in crisis, has this really eerie kind of negative connotative sound to it, but I guess we are in a crisis. Um, Here's an example of, of leveraging Olivia to create pipelines, something that I know is, is more important in campus recruiting than really most areas of recruiting, because essentially that's the job of a great campus recruiting team is to go out there, develop relationships, build pipelines, keep them warm, communicate with them, let them know when you're coming back to campus. So this is an example from uh, one of our, our uh, restaurant clients here and their interviewing immediately paused. Um, so the analogy here would be, as we think about upcoming fall recruiting, I think many of us are still in limbo with respect to our plans. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna change the schools that we go to? Are, are we gonna be able to be there physically? I know uh, campus recruiting for our own company is a really big strategic focus 
for our talent team, there are specific schools. We have four of our own interns that just started a couple of weeks ago. We typically will bring in anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 students, uh, graduating students to join um, our sales development program here. So what we can do, especially if we're our clients that are still in limbo, is we can still have Olivia continue her job of engaging, collecting information from students and let them know that, you know, we're not sure what our plans yet are at this point. We want to know who you are. And as we get more information, as our plans solidify, we can come back and inform you of whether we're going to be on campus or whether we're doing virtual events or not. Um, so I'll show you a, kind of a, a real example of this in practice and how Olivia looks and behaves on a web form. So I, I pre-built some of this out just for sake of time. You can see students welcome, Olivia's greeting them, asking for some information about them, looking for areas of interest. All of these, what we call conversations, are certainly customized for each client. In this example here, we're asking what country they're interested in. And as we go through this process here, what you're gonna see when I get to the end is a very specific message, letting the candidates know, thanking them for joining. And as our plans are solidified, as we know when we're doing events, you are going to hear from us. So it's just a great opportunity to keep that pipeline open um, 365 days a year and to allow Olivia to continue to do her job in collecting information. Again, this can be off of Facebook, this can be off of text, um, or of course the web, which is the example that I just shared with you. So we're seeing a lot of, a lot of current use uh, for this as students are coming, looking for information about when they're gonna, when employers are gonna be back on their campus instead of turning them away. We're get, uh, our clients are giving very specific instructions and notifications to students all through Olivia automatically without anyone from their team having to spend any time doing that from a communication perspective. So I'm gonna just take a sip of water here as we move forward and just remind the group that certainly at the end, we're gonna uh, leave time for a Q and A. So if you have any questions, please do feel free to put them in the chat. All right, we're gonna move to some live examples here uh, with respect to adapting to a virtual world and I certainly don't need to educate you guys on the phone um, how quickly things had to pivot um, given uh, given the pandemic so like many uh, great vendors that I know are participating in NACE we certainly do have uh, a, a solution for virtual events here. And we're gonna walk through this in a live environment. I want you guys to see exactly how this works. And I'm gonna uh, register myself as a student for an event. I have a colleague on the phone who's gonna play candidate. I'm gonna put her cell phone number in and you're gonna see what it's like to interact with the students once an event starts and how human the experience is in the process. And I think the word human is really important and it's really what drives the name of our company. The paradox is for this type of technology, we're not looking to replace humans. We're looking to give better experiences through human interaction by letting an assistant like Olivia take on all of this administrative work. There's a great saying that our our CEO loves, which is no one got into recruiting to go through piles of resumes, to play, to dial for dollar and try to set up uh, interviews, to manually push out reminders about events or interviewing or office hours or info, info sessions that are occurring. We want to give a better human experience by allowing people to do what they do best, which is to talk to students. Um, to sell the opportunity, to sell the company, to sell the culture. And before I show the live experience, here's 
um, a snippet of one of the case studies we've been we've been able to get our hands on. This is obviously happening really fast, um, and our clients are running at the speed of light with Olivia, and we're trying to honestly just keep up to speed with all their success and with all their stories. Um, here's one from a school district um, out in Arizona. Um, you can see some of, them, some of the numbers here with respect to the show rate, 100% for those that attended a virtual event. That's more, I mean, obviously it, it can't be better with a, a in-person event, but it was, it was even greater than they typically saw. Um, and then some of the, met, the numbers with respect to those that were qualified and were hired from the event, that's a pretty awesome hiring rate, almost a quarter of students. And what um, the, the, the component of the story that they were so quick to share with our team was that 10 of those hires were special education, um, typically a very difficult position to staff. They're in such short supply and they were able to get 10 of them um, by quickly pivoting within just one week and starting to run events uh, virtually. So a really awesome story. Um, and then the last story here that I'll share as folks needed to pivot was identifying those that had a face-to-face -face physical interview scheduled. They were a finalist. They were coming in for um, a super day activity. So in this example, um, one of our largest clients, a, a brand you guys are definitely familiar with, just cannot use their name. They're a, a defense and security company. What they did is they quickly filled, they were able to, um, through one of our dashboards, see who had an upcoming interview already confirmed in person. And with just one toggle, they could click it to virtual. And then Olivia, that would signal Olivia to go out there uh, communicate the change to all those that were scheduled, give them new information. Um, here's the link you're going to need, different instructions, how to test your computer, get prepared for the video component of the interview. So Olivia was um, really, really critical to many of our clients. When one day they were interviewing in their building, the next day they had to pivot over to a virtual world. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just show you a live um, example uh, from a registration perspective. So this is what a sample registration page can look like. There's so many ways to drive traffic to this type of page, whether it's off of um, social media like Instagram or Facebook or having students text um, you know, I went to Wisconsin, so I'll say text the word Badger to 25,000. And then based on those specific links and keywords, Olivia knows where to route the candidate to what event they would be interested in. And this is, of course, a fictitious event that I set up. Um, the first point I want to make here as we go through is we can leverage Olivia in a similar fashion that you saw earlier in terms of letting candidates ask questions before they click that register now button. So I might say, tell me about the company. Or do you offer internships? Um, I like this one. We, we hear this a lot from students. Um, can I reapply and submit an application for another for another role if I was disqualified. And you can see I'm going to get an answer back um, from Olivia. So this might be clearly apparent, but we there are no canned responses here. So of course, every client wants Olivia to respond in very specific ways with very specific information, especially when it comes to sensitive questions, like how do you value diversity in the workplace, um, among other things. Oh, and I like this one too. Um, tell me about the company's financial situation. And this, we see this used a lot by especially brands that aren't as well known as 
you know, other brands and, and students are interested in understanding how well funded you are. Um, what is your financial position? So there, there's a myriad of examples we can go through you guys. Um, but I thought I'd just show some of those common ones. And what's really cool is there are questions that are going to be to have the same answer at a very macro level, regardless of where I'm asking them, whether I'm on your website applying for a senior you know, accounting job or I'm a student coming out of college. They are very static. They will not change. What we do allow is per event. So you might have two events happening at the same time or 20 events happening at the same time. Those events might be very different with respect to the office, the types of roles, the programs that are being recruited for. So we can have what we call event specific questions. So if I ask a question like, um, is this a paid internship? That answer might be different based on this event versus another event, or maybe one office does something different or one country does something different than another country. So we can get very granular in how we answer those questions um, for students. So I'm just gonna click the register now button here. And while I do that, you'll see it lit up Olivia's brain here and now she knows her job is to get me registered. So I'm just gonna share my name. And she's going to ask for my phone number here. Notice there's a slight delay in her responding. We're trying to keep this as human as possible. So it, it feels like um, there's a person kind of behind the curtain answering. We track a lot of different metrics here. Um, one that's really cool is we can even track how many times candidates are thanking Olivia. Um, we have stories where um, students, candidates are coming in for interviews and they actually ask to meet Olivia to thank her for her service uh, leading up to the interview, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna say I am a senior. I wish I was back in 1999, I certainly was in college. And I'm sure no one on the Zoom would argue that I got a 4.0. One of the points I'll make here as we go through is you can use Olivia as a pre-screening mechanism for these events. So maybe it's an open event, you don't care who shows up and you just want her to collect some basic information and everyone will be offered the opportunity to register themselves. Or we can have some um, some tight pre-screening requirements. So, you know, you might only you might be recruiting engineering students, but you're only looking for specific computer science or mechanical engineering students. Um, so we can ensure that the folks that your team wants to speak with and spend their time with for this event are only those that Olivia is allowing to register for the event. We can include video in a couple capacities. You'll see, enough, you'll see how a video works during the event. If I click the video screen here, I can record myself. So you can ask students to share information. I'm gonna click record later here. And while I do that, I wanna show you that Olivia can also be um, used here as a mechanism to follow up with students. So remember earlier I gave the example of maybe for those that have not uploaded their uh, uh, a transcript after their first semester, Olivia chasing them down. So you just saw Olivia say, I'll remind you to provide your 30 second video later. And of course I was testing in preparation um, for this meeting. So here we saw Olivia came back to me on my phone reminding me to submit the, the, uh, the video portion of my registration, uh, which is really cool. So there's just so many ways to automate these tasks that typically people are running down and let the team focus on more strategic, non-administrative work. We can ask for transcripts, resumes in this case. I'm gonna skip for sake of time. And finally, I'm presented with a congratulations message. She's asking, how else may I assist you? I'm gonna say, I am all good. 
but thanks. And leading up to the event, there will be a series of notifications, communication going out. We're looking forward to talking to you. The event is in three days. Um, reminder, the event starts in one hour. Even when the event begins, we can text everyone's phone. Um, Olivia does have a strong appetite to always text. Um, there are certain rules and regs around the ability to text students, letting them opt in, opt out. Um, certainly we require that. If she does not have that permission, Olivia will always email. Um, in this case, students are typically coming in by texting keywords. So we, we have their consent. We already have their phone number. So what I'm gonna do now is go back into our backend system here. So this is your first look at our web-based system, um, what we call the CEM, the Candidate Engagement Manager. And we can see right here, I just pushed in the candidate um, that I just registered for this event, Jimmy. Now, there's a few things I wanna get to before in real time, you guys are gonna see how the, the communication occurs. One thing to mention is we are not asking Jimmy to go to a laptop. Everything will be powered directly through his phone, directly through natural chat, as you'll see in a moment. <clears throat> there's no apps to download, there's no links. We're not showing a web page on his phone that he has to zoom and pinch into. It will all be naturally through text the same way he's you know, texting 7,000 times a day with his friends and family. If I want to get visibility into Jimmy before uh, the event, we do have pre-built integrations with some of the popular social media sites here. So if I wanna get a peek out of his LinkedIn profile or run a Google search on him, um, look at him on Facebook, I can do that with just one click. I know a lot of our clients, they're not allowed to have those connections to social media. So certainly we can turn that off if we want. Um, at any point in time, I can turn this into a live video chat with just one click here. What that will do is send a link. It'll turn it into a, a FaceTime conversation right on Jimmy's phone. And I'll have the video screen show up on my, on my purview here, as you saw earlier. And then in terms of communication, what we find, and you guys know this better than I do, I've been to you know hundreds of, of recruiting events at schools, at places like National Black MBA and SWE and SHIP and Grace Hopper. And when students line up, they're greeted by a recruiter at the booth. And it's typically a very repetitive spiel in opening comment. And that's even more important in the virtual world. So as students are showing up for the event, they will just appear on my list here on the left as if they're lining up physically at your booth. Uh, what we've introduced here is the concept of hashtag messages, which are essentially just uh, templated messages. So recruiters, greeters, um, whoever's supporting the process doesn't have to consistently type the same information. So I'm just gonna um, share my welcome message with this student as they show up and click send here. And because I have a colleague on the phone whose phone number I used as part of this, I'm gonna ask her to now just type back, you know, some type of thank you message. And you guys will see in the screen on real time um, how this happened. So this is the interface that our clients use during the event. And we are just texting back and forth with students in a very natural way. So. The example I like to give here is like when you get out of, when you're waiting for your Uber and the Uber app allows you to text with your driver, send information, ask a question, where are you? I don't see you. You're not really texting with your Uber driver's phone. It's all throttled through another piece of technology, which is the same piece of technology we use. So recruiters are never forced to text from their phone they will do it directly from our system. And this is how the communication goes back and forth during the event. If there was a resume that was brought in as part of this, I can view the resume here. Um, if they did complete the video portion, 
as part of the registration process, I would see the video here. And then the last, uh, or the second to last point I'll make is, we have this collaborative notes section. So the example I like to give here is, at a, at a real career fair, you're, you're typically greeted by recruiters. They might take a glance at your resume. They might ask a couple of questions and then determine that um, you should talk to one of the hiring managers, one of the teams that's at the booth in another room. And essentially the recruiter is physically walking the candidate over to that team. Now in a virtual world, the way that we're doing that is by leveraging our collaborative notes section here. So I can use the at symbol and I can find the hiring manager. And I'm essentially virtually passing this candidate off to another team member to take over this conversation. So by tagging Emily in this example, and adding this note, it'll alert Emily, it'll send this candidate into Emily's queue, and then Emily will just take over the conversation from the recruiter the same way she would if we were at a physical event and the recruiter walked the candidate over to me. So that's the fun live interactive portion of the session. Just a few minutes, a few more slides to go before we open it up. Uh, for some Q&A, which we hope you guys will um, put in the chat area. Um, the last section we just want to cover here is what we're calling uh, the great rehiring. I don't know if we actually get credit for that label. Apologize if I'm plagiarizing from someone out there, but there's some great applicability um, to campus to, to recruiting students here. So what you're looking at here is just a, a screenshot from a portion of one of our dashboards here, which is tracking, in this case, by day. Conversations Olivia is having, we could do it by the minute, we can do it by the hour. As you can see here, we're seeing some significant spikes that are occurring. Um, we had one client share a story with us a couple of weeks ago. They posted one job, and I'll say that again, one job, for one at-home telesales position and received over 28,000 applicants from that one job. And we all know what's happening with the unemployment numbers and that probably is not too surprising to you. So Olivia um, gives great ability to provide um, automated screening support at scale. She can talk to 10 people, 10,000 people, 10 million people at one time and really kind of support the top of the funnel and hone in on individuals and make sure that as the haystack gets greater and greater with all this influx in volume, it's much easier to route the needles in those haystack uh, to the recruiters um, so that we're, we're still focusing our time on top talent here. So, um, so the last point I'll make on this slide, you guys, is that we're seeing clients prepare for this. Um, they're noticing already a great increase in students looking for entry level jobs. A lot of companies have cut um, altogether or, or a portion of the typical hiring that they do with entry level folks and they're just seeing a lot of people and it's causing a lot of noise, if you will. And we're really seeing our clients start to re-engineer Olivia to address that different noise and to introduce um, even some other screening criteria within their process. So a great example I know, especially um, in, the, in the engineering world, um, using some type of coding assessments are really possible. I know HackerRank is a, is a big player in that space. Um, Tradeify as well, companies we partner with. And we're looking to leverage the assessment based on how candidates are asking those questions to immediately present it to them and to do an additional layer of screening because recruiters just can't handle all of that volume. So Olivia is going out to specific individuals, trying to move them forward in a process and asking them um, to take an assessment. 
And finally, the last point I just want to drive home with on, on this topic is, you know, the, the idea here is, and, and hopefully this came through loud and clear, is we're looking to, to help organizations scale their recruiting teams. It can be executive recruiting, professional, campus recruiting, um, with this type of um, assistive intelligence to allow them to do more with less. Essentially, building a, a well-oiled, lean factory um, for talent, if you will. So think of, you know, I'm sure there are many of you on the phone who work for organizations that manufacture something for a living, any kind of product. And I guarantee your factories are leveraging automation in so many different capacities. Um, the way you produce today is very different than if we took a tour of your factory back in the 80s or 90s. There are robots, there are computers, and there are highly skilled people overseeing all of that work, stepping in when they're needed. And that's really what we're talking about here. Um, you guys, building that, that factory of talent for the future, helping our clients be as productive and efficient as possible to produce the, the leaders of the future. And with all that's happening in the environment at a macro level, with the economy, with a pandemic, with other areas, and then other factors happening within specific industry, this need is even greater. I cannot tell you how busy we are as an organization because um, co companies are being forced to ask these questions as they look at the future. Once we come back online, once our hiring picks up, once we see an, an influx of open job requisitions, um, expanding our internships, what does that mean for us? How are we gonna handle the workload? How are we gonna do a job and treat every candidate um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis? in a very personalized way with a very personalized touch, giving them information, giving them a great perception of our brand and our company, but all along leveraging our people, our humans, our recruiters, our ambassadors to do what they do best, which is have one-on-one -on -one conversations with individuals that are qualified that we want to move forward in our process. So with that, I believe we have about 10 minutes left for q and A. Q &A if, there are, if there is any uh, questions out there um, before we turn back to the NACE staff to bring some closing comments. And it looks like we might have a couple questions here. Um, all right, wow, this is a great question from Jamie. And it's almost as if I planted this question. Um, so there's a really cute story, Jamie, and for those on the phone, how did we, the question is, how did you decide on the name Olivia for your AI assistant? So um, the picture of Olivia that I showed earlier is the actual wife of our founder and CEO. That is the real Olivia. Um, and there was certainly a process on, on how to name her, but it, it boiled down to um, leveraging her name. She's become a great fixture to our company. Um, she's part of our leadership team. We sometimes bring her to conferences if NACE was happening in, um, in a physical environment. It's quite possible we would have had the real Olivia at our booth. Clients love taking pictures with her. So that is how we got the name. But hopefully you recall from earlier, most of our clients do um, give her a different persona and rename her as well. And I thought there was one other question, but I don't see one. Any other questions? We'd love to field them right now. Um, if you wanted to take things offline, you can always find me on LinkedIn. I would certainly recommend going to our website. Um, if you wanted to have um, more personalized, deeper conversations with our team, um, you'd go to paradox.ai. You would actually be greeted by Olivia when you go there and she will help navigate you to the right members of my team um, to, to have those personal conversations with you and help you get scheduled for those conversations as well. Oh, we might have one more, let's see. And we don't, that was Nick giving the panelists some information 
about this event and survey. So if there are no other questions, we'll certainly thank those who joined. Um, hopefully this gave you kind of a different perspective on how we can put a modern skin over some legacy decade old processes, programs, um, ways we've typically done things and just put a more modern skin over them and give students different ways to get information, to connect with you, to register for events, to chat with you in a virtual like way, to get information about your company. And yeah, it was really a pleasure to be in front of, of the group today. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back to the NACE staff to close out our session here. Oh, here's a question. Sorry, it just came in. Um, it says, talk about the back end work to get Olivia functional for an organization. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a great question. It seems like a lot of Q&A would need to be provided. Um, is it time consuming? So our team does all of that. It's a really good question. Um, it certainly is a process to do that. That's part of implementation. And our team leads all of that work. So we have what we call a pre-built knowledge base with over 4,000 intents already built. So Olivia's job, and this is really where a big component of the AI comes in, Olivia's job is to understand the intent of a question so she can go and find the answer, the, the proper answer to, to display back uh, to the candidate. It's typically about a two-week process uh, to do that. What our team does is they start to scour our new clients career pages, they go on places like YouTube looking for videos, um, anywhere and everywhere they can find information that your company is already displaying in a more static environment. And they start to pre-build this out and then in concert with our clients, start to review that information and just fill in some of those gaps. So it is work that our team takes on 100%, but certainly we do require support from our clients to validate information. Um, and you might need to change information on the fly. So an answer you give to the external world today might not be the same answer you wanna give to the external world tomorrow. So there's great ability for our team or your team to on the fly modify those responses so that they are um, very re relevant and applicable to the present day. Thank you for that question, uh, Ning. Any other last thoughts or questions from the group here? All right, well, if someone on the NACE staff is still on the phone to say goodbye, we'd certainly welcome your closing comments. Um, thank you, David, for a very informative session. And thank you participants for attending today's session. This officially concludes the webinar and you may now sign off.